Have you ever noticed what musicians usually say to each other right before they start jamming? All right, guys, uh, listen to the blues riff and B. Watch me for the changes. And what key are you in? E. E. Okay. They always define a key to make sure they will sound good together. But what does it mean to play in a key? And how to develop that skill of improvising in any key? Should you spend many years learning theory in a music school to get that? Well, probably it should work. But what if I'll tell you that you can achieve this skill much faster without learning a lot of theory and you don't even have to memorize every note name on a fretboard? For instance, if someone will tell me, hey, let's play in a B flat minor. B flat minor, okay. So, what is the key? In music theory, the key of a piece is the group of pitches or scale that forms the basis of a music composition. In simple words, it's just a group of notes that sound good together. For example, in C major, you have seven notes, and you know them for sure. C, D, E, F, G, A, B. And then it repeats. Even though I don't know how to play piano, I can just hit any white key in any order and that should work over the C major backing track. Let's try this one. Okay, what about that? Look at me, I'm improvising on the piano with no technical skills at all. But how to find all the C major notes on the guitar fretboard? You should find the C note and then start counting. Whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Actually, there's a lot of free online tools that can show you all the notes of any key on the fretboard. I like this one, link in the description. Here you can choose the key and it will show you all the notes on the fretboard. For instance, here is C major, F sharp major, B flat minor. But how to be able to improvise without looking at the virtual fretboard? That's what I did. I took all the exercises I knew and adopted them into the key by using only those notes which were in that current key. And every day or once in a few days I changed the key just like this. So while I was practicing the techniques like alternate picking, legato and so on, I was also memorizing all the shapes and scales automatically. Let me show you an example. Let's say you have this simple exercise. How would you play it all over the neck? Like this? Well, that would work for your fingers, but not for your brain. What if I'll put it inside the key, for instance, C major? Now it sounds like a music, and you can already apply it over the C major backing track. I have prepared for you a series of exercises that I used a lot. And I arranged it to a few groups. And each group will contain levels from the total beginner exercises to more advanced. First we need to choose the key. C major probably is the most popular key for YouTube tutorials. So let's try something else. I will take E minor instead. So today we are playing in E minor key. Let's start with an easiest one. Just play open E string, down, up, down, up. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. But on count one, let's add a note from the E minor scale and go ascending. And then backwards. Even this simple exercise already sounds more musical than all these boring chromatics. Now let's play a note from the scale on count 1 and 2 and count 3 and 4 will be an open string.
Next, as you might already guess, a three note pattern. <laughs> Finally, four. Now, instead of four hits on each note, let's play only two. You might notice that it became uncomfortable to play it with only one finger, so let's use all four of them. Now let's try sequences. You play first four notes, and then you play next four starting on a second note from the previous four. And the same way backwards. If it seems hard for you, you can make it easier by playing each note two or four times. That will give your brain more time to think about what fret comes next. exercises on each string but using only the notes from the current key, E minor in our case. Next level is a vertical movement. So instead of going higher on the neck, we will play only three notes on each string. Then I make a slide to the next note of the scale and play the same three note per string pattern but descending. Again, this exercise is more useful for your alternate picking technique than the usual chromatics. Because when you play 4 note per string chromatic, you always start a new string with a down pick. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. So you are training only inside string changing, from up to down. And when you play 3 note per string pattern, you start each new string with a different picking. Down, up, down. Up, down, up, down, up, down, 
up, down, up. So you train both inside and outside string changing. Now let's apply sequences to the vertical movement. Then you can change the amount and order of notes in each iteration of sequence and get the endless amount of patterns. Legato is a combination of hammer-on and pull-offs, so let's train them separately and then put together. Now let's combine hammer-ons and pull-offs together to get some patterns like this. The main thing you need to know about the bands is they always should reach a certain note. The first exercise is very easy. You just hit the note and then reach that same note with the band from the previous note of the scale. Then you can add some vibrato in the end. Now let's try to make descending band and then the usual one back to the higher note. This is harder than it seems, because you should already have the muscle memory to guess the right pitch before you hit the note.
I don't want to talk much about the pentatonic because it's overplayed on the YouTube and you can find thousands of licks. I just want to show a few of the most simple ones, which I used a lot. Even though I criticized chromatic exercises, it doesn't mean you have to get rid of them completely. I personally use them more as a warm-up exercises. And this is my current daily practicing routine. First section, warm-up exercises. Not long, just 5-15 minutes. Main section consists of few blocks with 3-4 exercises inside each one. Section number 3. Improvising over the backing track. Just use all the shapes and patterns from the previous section. Later you can start composing your own backing tracks before the improvisation. And I was talking about it in my previous video. If you are a total, absolute beginner, don't be afraid to improvise. Even if you are currently on the lowest technical level. At first your improvisation would be very primitive. Just like mine on a piano a few minutes ago. Then you will add some easy legatos and slides. Then you will start using more strings, add some bands, vibratos. you will combine it with pentatonic licks and you will get something just like I played in the beginning of the video. The more you improve each technique, the more diversity you will get in your improvisation. And the key will become a map where you can apply all the techniques. At first you can stick with one key for a few days or even weeks. But then you'll be able to change them more often and in the end cover them all. But don't be frustrated with the amount of keys. Because actually every major key has its relative minor. For instance, G major has all the same notes as E minor. So instead of 24, you got 12 maps to remember. And this 12 actually has all the same shapes. You just shift it up and down the fretboard. So basically you need to remember one map and be able to shift it depending on the current key. Of course, everything I showed you today is just the beginning of an endless journey of learning music. And there are so many aspects of improvisation and different exercises to dive deeper in every guitar technique and I will do it in my next videos. But in this video I wanted to emphasize that you can start having fun with improvisation even before you achieve any technical skills. Feel free to ask any questions in the comment section or on my Instagram. Also, if you want to support me, you can subscribe to my Patreon and get the higher priority for answering any of your questions. Thanks for watching, keep practicing and see you later!